Hi, I'm Wesley with 22 Zines, and welcome back to the 22 Zine Awards, in which I go through every zine that I acquired during 2023 and grant fabulous awards. <laughs> Make sure to watch part one for the intro if you haven't already. Today, I'm going to be going through the first half of zines that I acquired from a zine distro. The first zine distro that I got zines from this year is an art and zine distro in Olympia, Washington called Gallery Boom, and I got some zines from them back in March. The first award of the day is for Best Collage, and that goes to Permacrest Number 4 by Mizka Malarkey. This zine is so cool. <laughs> okay, best collage. I know you that is quite a competitive category, but as we flip through the scene, I think you'll see why I think it needs to go to Permacrest number four. What I really appreciate about the collages in Permacrest is the raw spirit, the raw energy, the hearkening back to going through old magazines, cutting them up, not so cleanly, not so perfectly, not getting too involved in making perfect layers, but taking some colorful construction paper, cutting out some magazine clippings, and gluing them straight on down there. I appreciate the use of text cut out from these magazines as well. There are hand drawings that were drawn and then themselves cut out and pasted onto the uh, colorful construction paper backgrounds, and that is so great. It is bright, janky, layered. The gluing is imperfect, which means that you can see the raised pieces. You get these shadows that are built in from the pieces that are layered on top of the construction paper. It is so... It feels like going through a true magazine, a true punk magazine, someone who has taken a magazine and and made it into something cool and countercultural, and I love it. Not only that, but the actual content of the zine, the theming and the <laughs> illustrations and just the subject matter that's being talked about is essentially taught. It's like a per zine slash uh, parent zine talking about what it is like living in Butte, Montana, as a super cool leftist. This zine really captures the whole collage punk DIY spirit so well, and for that reason I am proud to award Best Collage to Permacrust No. 4 by Mizka Malarkey. The award for Best 24-Hour Zine goes to the Reverse Cougar Years, issue five and a half, Breaking, by Max, or Revolution of Words. This little zine is actually somewhat old. It's from 2014, but I only had the pleasure of discovering it this year when I acquired it from Gallery Boom. This zine is the quintessential 24-hour zine, and I think that it's clear right down to numbering it as issue 5.5, .5 and saying explicitly in the introduction, I didn't feel comfortable calling it a full issue because I already have issue number six planned. And as someone who does have a numbered Persian series, which um, does not necessarily go in chronological order of when it was created, I relate to these numbering issues so much. This really feels like the sort of story that needs to be in a 24-hour zine that needs to be published because you just can't wait to have it in a longer zine that you are working on. This is the story of how author Max broke their wrist, and as they say in the introduction, it is the second time that they fractured a bone in less than a year. And that, to me, is in itself exactly the sort of subject that needs to be in a 24-hour zine to highlight just the absurdity of it and make an immediate record of the ridiculousness of breaking multiple bones, unrelated bones, one after another. <laughs> The zine, partly as a result of being a 24-hour zine and partly because of difficulties in making zines and laying out zines with a broken wrist, which I've never had to do myself, but I imagine is quite difficult, the way that the zine is laid out is simply as 
double-sided sheets of paper that are folded but are to be unfolded to read, are not stapled anywhere, are not laid out or imposed. And I think that just suggests how easy it really is to make a zine and to make a 24-hour zine, to just write your story, to say anything that you want to say, this is done in a typewriter font and printed out uh, with large borders that are loosely glued onto patterned scrapbook paper, and that really is all that you need to <laughs> make a zine. That is more than you need to make a zine, although I do appreciate this aesthetic, this very classic black and white zine aesthetic cut and paste is very up my alley, and I hope that it is up your alley as well. I am so happy to read this, and it encourages me to make more of my own 24-hour zines, perhaps in a similar format, when I have something that I must get out there. So for that reason, I am granting the award Best 24-Hour Zine to the Reverse Cougar, the Reverse Cougar Years, Issue 5.5, Breaking, by Max. This next zine I purchased in person at an art gallery that does distro a few zines. I have some of my own zines there, and that is Shoe Bones here in Salem, Massachusetts. This zine I am granting what perhaps sounds like not the most flattering award, but I hope that you will understand uh, that I mean it in a lovely way, and that is the Beautiful Ugliness Award, which goes to My Room by Nina Finch. This zine is a digital collage of photographs of items found around Nina's room. I think this zine is ugly, but in such a fascinating way. Ugly in a raw way. Ugly in an unpretentious way. In a familiar way, and in a way that feels like looking at old Polaroids, or scrapbooks, or things that are imperfect, things that are not shiny and high resolution and uh, stunningly produced. They are what is real, and they are our actual everyday experience. We see these photos which are at times blurry, at times incorporated with this glitch art with strange patterns in the background, with weird lighting, some of which is too yellow or too cold and strange shadows. You see JPEG artifacts, you see blurry photos, you see pixelation, you see white edges, and not to mention the actual subject the of the photographs, the photographs themselves being of very well-loved items in the person's room. So I think that this zine really shows how we actually live, shows that image isn't everything, and really makes collage and zine making and just life and creation all more accessible by acknowledging that ugliness in itself can be beautiful. I hope you understand why I use that in a flattering way, and I hope you will agree with my awarding of the Beautiful Ugliness Award to My Room by Nina Finch. Next up we have some zines that I got from Silver Sprocket, which is a zine distro and comic store in San Francisco. The first award is for Most Nostalgic, and that goes to Bubbles Number no. 6, an independent fanzine about comics and manga. You certainly could say that what makes this nostalgic is the content itself. You have things like Peanuts comics, and finds of vintage items on eBay, and a highlight of Jack Kirby, who has done a lot of comic art in the 60s and 70s, but I think what really makes this feel nostalgic is the experience of reading it. This zine has a very large size that makes it feel like flipping through a magazine. This zine has advertisements for art galleries and some old fantasy style images in it. It has hand-drawn comics throughout that remind me of comics submitted to my middle school's indie underground newspaper. 
there's a huge variety of things, including reviews, art, comics, highlights of particular artists, interviews, and much, much more within. I think that flipping through this reminds me very much of the feeling of reading old Santa of reading old fantasy and science fiction magazines or journals or collected books, which is something that I used to do quite a bit. It feels friendly and exciting and accessible and like a magazine that is made just for me <laughs> on things that I am interested in. So although this very easily could have gotten many other awards, uh, largest certainly being one of them, I think that for me it makes the most sense as most nostalgic and is certainly deserving of that award. The next award is for Best Storytelling, and that goes to the Book of Perkta, the Snow Maiden by Hyacinth. This zine is so cool. For those who don't know, Perkta is a continental European spirit, deity, goddess, many things, <laughs> depending on where you're from, especially in Germany. This entire piece is part story and part performance piece. The zine's first edition, as they note on the back, corresponds with a guerrilla performance piece that Hyacinth did in which they dressed up as the Snow Maiden. It includes collages, paintings, and images from that performance alongside the story. Or perhaps I shouldn't say alongside, I really mean to communicate the story, because the story of Perkta and the feeling of this whole piece is done in combination of the text and images in such a stunning way where neither could exist without the other. All these many pieces of multimedia coming together to embody this spirit of Perkta in a gender nonconformist, activist, righteous, just, and disruptive way. What could have been simple description ends up becoming an entire epic of chronicling Perkta's adventures and Hyacinth's per and Hyacinth's adventures in embodying Perkta. It is as though reading an anti-capitalist, anti-industrialist folktale. It is absolutely incredible, and the whole thing comes together into a beautiful, touching, and invigorating story. For that reason, I am happy to grant Best Storytelling to Book of Perkta, The Snow Maiden by Hyacinth. The next award refers to something that I rarely talk about, which is the price of zines. I tend to prefer zines that are priced very cheaply, and I think that making zines free or as inexpensive as possible makes them more accessible. And to me, the accessibility of zines and their ability to expand and fill the world is very important to me. I recognize that values are going to be slightly different for different zinesters that part of what they may value more is being able to be paid for their work and their time. The question of zine pricing is, of course, very deep, very complicated, and is something that I would be interested in exploring, but not here. The reason that I bring it up at all is because this zine very much surprised me in terms of its price. So I'll just go ahead and say that this award is for most worth the price. And that award goes to Cartoon Spirituality by Inez Estrada. I had seen this zine for many, many months, and the subject is definitely right up my alley. The images are right up my alley, and I was absolutely fascinated in what this could possibly contain. It is, as it describes itself, a fanzine about cartoons, magic, consciousness, faith, and fandom and it explores the relationship between pop culture and spirituality, pop culture and religion, and in personal spirituality, personal devotionals, how the way in which we relate to cartoons is similar to the way in which we relate to deities. I think this subject is absolutely incredible, and what 
ultimately made me hesitate about purchasing it was that it was $10 to purchase. There's nothing wrong with pricing your zine however you want to, but it is one of those things that made me hesitate and made me question if I should really get it, because why spend $10 on one zine when I could spend $3 each on three zines, or $2 each on five zines, potentially? I absolutely believe that the zinester deserves to be paid for their work. It was just a an issue of my own budgeting and an issue of my own ability to access this zine. I ultimately did end up making room in my budget for this zine and pulling the trigger and actually purchasing it, and I am so glad that I did because I think that the content of this zine has d given me so much in return. It has opened my mind to an entire way of thinking and an entire approach to the world, to spirituality, and to conceptions of human culture and human tendencies that I never would have even considered otherwise, that I wouldn't have been able to access. So in terms of the price of the zine, I think I got so much out of it. I mean, this isn't to say that I haven't gotten so much out of zines that are cheap or free. Uh, this is, award is mostly to encourage other people who may be questioning whether it is worth arranging their budget in a way to spend money on one zine when they could get multiple zines, and I think that this zine is something that is absolutely worth the cost. For that reason, I am giving Cartoon Spirituality the award of most worth the price. The next award is somewhat specific, <laughs> a very special award called the Witchy Cat Award, and this is named for the Witchy Cat Tarot, which is one of my absolute favorite tarot decks of all time. It is by Dame Darcy, and I often like to read zines and use tarot in conjunction with each other, and so as a result, I wanted to grant this award to the zine that I felt most connected to as I was reading tarot with that I think pairs very nicely with my favorite tarot deck, the Witchy Cat Tarot. And so the Witchy Cat Award goes to Cat Party number three, The Collectible Cat by Katie Hagel. This is part of a purr zine series about cats, and and this issue in particular talks about some various objects and knickknacks, cat-shaped or cat-themed items throughout the author's house, how they got them, how they feel about them, and some various other musing thoughts. I absolutely love this. It is a very cozy and accessible feeling. It feels very much like home, and I, too, have a very special connection with certain knickknacks and objects in my house that seem perhaps frivolous or unnecessary or, you know, otherwise doesn't make sense to people who haven't lived with them. I really enjoy reading about other people's interests, their items, where the items came from, and how it ultimately shapes their home and their lives. This zine features many memories of items that they have, including a cat jigsaw puzzle, a strange TV lamp, which I had never heard of before, cross-stitch samplers, and other cat-themed items, and what it means to them, what it makes them think of, or funny stories associated with those items. My very favorite line from this zine, and what I think definitely categorizes it as appropriate for witchy cat as opposed to just cats, is the line, Everyone is a witch now, and I love it. I'm a witch too, kind of. That is definitely reminiscent of my own experience, and I too love that everybody is a witch now, and I too am a witch, kind of. And finally for today, we have the award for Best Fonts, and that is for The Chaos of Enlightenment. A Journey Through the Energy Centers of the Body by Christy C. Rode. Some of you may recognize Christy C. Rode's name as the creator of the Next World Tarot. 
and when I found out they had a zine, I absolutely had to jump on it. This is an absolutely beautiful risograph zine with illustrations of each of the energy centers or chakras as they are referred to in certain traditions, along with a sort of prose dedication poetry piece next to it referring to what that energy center is and how it ultimately supports us in our life. The illustrations here are, of course, absolutely stunning. If you have seen any of Christy C. Rhodes' work before, you will not be surprised by that. But I specifically want to focus on the fonts in this, because look at these. The hand-drawn fonts that are uh, placed at the bottom of the illustrations are so absolutely cool. They're very, very inspiring for me drawing my own fonts and my own text. I love the shape of each one of these letters. I love the line weights that managed to do, and I love how it feels natural and yet deliberate. It feels easy, but it's so detailed and interesting. The font choice for the text itself as well is very good. It's very interesting. There are these very subtle changes in the size of text where certain words are capitalized and certain words are not. You have some words that are slightly taller and some words that aren't. The font size adjusts ever so slightly and the fact that it is all justified means that you have a different n amount of space in between each, which makes the entire thing look like a poem, a, a whole art piece just made out of the text itself, and it really transports you to this magical place. I absolutely love the way that fonts are used, and of course we have to talk about the incredible Riso font on the front of bright pink, the chaos of enlightenment. This looks like it should be an album cover. It is so cool. I absolutely love the anarchic A, the moon in the O, the little twists and turns, how it feels sharp and yet curvy, hand-drawn, but powerful. These are absolutely the best fonts that I have seen in a zine, and for that reason I have to give Chaos of Enlightenment the award of Best Fonts. That's all for today. I hope you'll join me tomorrow for part two in which we'll cover the rest of the zines that I got from Zine Distros, and of course later throughout the week for even more zines from even more sources. See you later. Bye.